Elon Musk shocked everyone with the Warp Drive Starship 2022 update. Elon Musk reveals it. Engineers in the aerospace industry are keen to leapfrog into the future. Starship's technology is not yet completely matured, but they are aiming for the far future. It's going to be difficult, however. Who knows what SpaceX and NASA have been up to recently? Elon Musk, SpaceX, and NASA have just shown a new warp drive spacecraft and it's just breathtaking. Do we know the questions going through your mind or what will it look like? How fast will it be? Is it possible? Let's get down to that. Welcome to our channel where you get real updates about space and technologies. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and also smash the bell icon so that you can be notified when we release a new video. Thanks. Star Trek's Warp Drive, a hypothetical superluminal spaceship propulsion system, has featured in several science fiction novels and is the subject of ongoing physics research. In 1957, Book Islands of Space, John W. Campbell initially developed the concept of a warp drive and the Star Trek series popularized it. The Alcubia drive is a hypothetical application of a theoretical solution to the field equations of the general theory of relativity. An explanation of the Alcubia drive is required here. In his PhD dissertation at the University of Wales, Cardiff, Miguel Alcubierre developed the Alcubia warp drive, a hypothetical warp drive based on Einstein's field equations in general relativity which would allow a spaceship to accomplish apparent faster than light speed by generating an energy field with a density lower than that of a vacuum. A starship might achieve faster than light speed by compressing the space in front of it and expanding the space behind it, rather than simply traveling faster than light inside a local reference frame. The Alcubia drive transforms the space surrounding an object such that it may reach its objective quicker than light would in normal space without breaking any physical principles. Objects cannot accelerate to the speed of light in ordinary space-time. Einstein's special relativity theory states that unlike photons, solid objects with non-zero rest mass cannot travel at the speed of light. To go faster than the speed of light, any material object would need an infinite supply of kinetic energy. It is one of the science fiction tropes that would allow novels with a cosmic scope to get over this limitation in fiction. While the idea of space warp has been called illogical, it has been related to other rubber science notions like anti-gravity and negative mass that do not fit with our current understanding of physics. Scientific interest in the concept has not been discouraged though. An email from Alcubierre to William Shatner, a well-known science fiction author and actor best known for his work on Star Trek, cited the warp drive of science fiction as an inspiration for his proposal. NASA's thoughts are at a 2.5 million light years away, Andromeda is the closest nearby galaxy. Our travel possibilities would be restricted even if we were able to develop a spacecraft that could travel faster than light. Even though it's much simpler today, it's still a nuisance. There is no doubt that the universe is vast. However, we may be capable of building a spacecraft that travels at speeds more than light. To determine whether and how a faster than light warp drive is feasible, Harold White, a NASA scientist and the head of the advanced propulsion team, was in charge of the agency's endeavors. It was his idea to build a spacecraft that looked a lot like the Enterprise from the original Star Trek series. White was in charge of an interferometer experiment aimed at determining the nanoscale magnitude of such an effect. A non-zero or non-conforming influence was detected, although the scientists noted that the difference may have been created by other variables. To put it another way, we need additional information. The failure of the experiment does not rule out the existence of warp bubbles. It is equally possible that we are trying to detect them in an inefficient method. This indicates how much effort is needed before the effect can be used for space travel, although we are still attempting to find out whether a warp bubble can emerge. But even if it's only for show, the fact that the warp bubble allowed for fractional light speed travel has enormous implications. 1% light speed will enable us to explore and inhabit the whole solar system. A 0.1% light speed would make the exploration and colonization of Mars or the Moon substantially simpler. A more detailed review of the arithmetic has shown past fears that a hypothetical warp drive may wipe out whole star systems invalid. This may not be a problem, but boats close to the ship's warp engine may still be in danger. A substantial change in energy requirements has occurred between Alcubierre's first predictions that planetary-sized power sources would be necessary to current evidence that suggests we could construct a spacecraft with a power source the size of Voyager 2. Is there a warp drive on this? A more detailed review of the arithmetic has debunked past fears that a hypothetical warp drive may wipe out whole star systems. 
boats close to the warp drive ship may be in danger even though data says this is unlikely to be a problem. It has been estimated that a power source the size of Voyager 2 may be used in the construction of a spacecraft since al Kubir's first judgment that planetary sized power sources were necessary. Could Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, become a real life Zephram Cochran, the imaginary Star Trek creator of Warp Drive? An astronomer and public celebrity Neil deGrasse Tyson seems to think so. Tyson asked Musk on Twitter when he would stop working on Mars rockets, hyperloops, cybertrucks, and brain computer connections, and instead of concentrate his efforts on developing a warp drive like the one seen in Star Trek to accelerate spaceships across universes. He signed it saying, sincerely, space geeks of the world. SpaceX and Tesla are not going to be side companies for Elon Musk, so he reacted to Tyson on Twitter with a convincing argument for sticking to his primary businesses. A metropolis on Mars would serve as a significant driving force for the development of a warp drive. Neither Musk's plans nor our progress toward a genuine warp drive will be impacted by this Twitter spat. SpaceX Starship's arrival on Mars will have to suffice for us. While this may be a short-term setback, it might be just what Musk needs to achieve his goal of colonizing Mars. Any planet or moon apart from Venus has a surface temperature and sunlight conditions that are more like our own than any other planet or moon. The surface is inhospitable to humans and most known life forms because of radiation, low air pressure, and an atmosphere with just 0.16% oxygen. To sustain human life on Mars, sophisticated life support systems would have to be installed in the structures that would be built. These water purification systems are critical. We would die within days if we didn't have access to water, which makes sense given that we are mainly water. Weariness and dizziness, as well as a 10% loss in physical and mental function, may be caused by even a 5% to 8% decline in total body water. Mars is a challenging environment for humans to dwell in. NASA has developed a variety of technologies that might be used to colonize Mars in the future. Biological processes might be adversely influenced in a variety of ways by the colonist environment on Mars, according to experts' predictions. There is a slew of adverse effects on the body that might just be kept to a minimum when radiation dosages rise. Gravity inequalities might harm human health by weakening bones and muscles. In addition to osteoporosis and cardiovascular problems, there is the chance the International Space Station currently spins astronauts in zero gravity for six months, which is about the same as a one-way journey to Mars. Scientists can now better predict what conditions people on a voyage to Mars will find themselves in. Only 38% of Earth's surface gravity can be found on Mars. Microgravity affects the circulatory, musculoskeletal, and vestibular central nerve systems. There is a large amount of radiation reaching the surface of Mars despite its relative proximity to the sun because Mars has lost its inner dynamo, which has greatly weakened the magnetosphere. An enormous amount of ionizing radiation may reach the Martian surface because of this and the planet's thin atmosphere. As a whole, these factors would encourage spacecraft to fly at the fastest speed conceivable. A successful development of warp drives or a related piece of technology will provide this in spades. Neil deGrasse Tyson was correct in his assessment of the situation. Do you think the industry will be able to achieve this within the time frame? Kindly comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell icon so that you can be notified when we release a new video. Thanks. Gravity inequalities might harm human health by weakening bones and muscles.